I remember I was 20 years old. I was a junior in college at Northern Illinois University. I had a beat up old Honda Accord, driving it to the local Walmart to pick up some things. When I arrived in the parking lot, two squad cars followed me. Eventually they turned their lights on. Four police officers jumped out. They came to me, screaming for me to get out of the car. Their guns pointed toward my head and my chest, demanding that I get against the car. Some were demanding that I get on the ground. I was confused, I was scared, I was nervous. Couldn't understand what was happening and I began to question why I was being stopped. And they asked a bunch of questions as they frisked me for whatever substance had been stolen from the Walmart. It was not my first encounter and it wouldn't be my last encounter with police. The suspect was 230 pounds and five foot nine. I was six feet tall and 160 pounds. This is a reckoning for society. How we treat black and brown bodies matters. Black lives matter. And while I am saddened by what we've seen in the brutal death of George Floyd with videos blazing, showing it minute by minute. I am also hopeful at the change that I see that can take place because of real activists, of real young people that are willing to go out and risk it all and not just ask for justice, but demand justice. I am saddened that black and brown bodies are aggressively policed are overly subjected to the use of force and are routinely subjected to death by force and rarely the recipients of any type of justice. But this new generation is not just marching, asking for change. They're demanding change to the systemic racism and systems of oppression and mass incarceration that keeps its foot and knee on the neck of black and brown bodies. We stand in solidarity. I stand in solidarity as a victim, as a father, understanding that change must happen.